Today, I'm happy to be here with Danielle Gardner, and some of you may recognize her from you know, various, uh, her Facebook page or the videos you may have seen of her online, her website. Uh, her Facebook page is called Quiet Marketing with Danielle Gardner. Uh, well, Danielle, first, I just want to say hi to you. Thanks for being here. Thanks for doing this. Hi, George. Thank you. It's always really um, fun to catch up and, and have a, a chat about things. So thanks for inviting me into this. Yeah. So we're going to talk about um, how do we respond to, you know, the, the overwhelming times uh, that we're in. But just over, overall, the kinds of um, entrepreneurs, the kinds of business owners you work with uh, really are looking for uh, a, an alternative to the hustle uh, and the grind of the mainstream business teachings. Um, I want to actually, uh, before we get going, I want to just share with people your, your bio and then we'll kind of get into yeah, the conversation. Sure. So Danielle Gardner specializes in helping sensitive women to clarify their message, to market with quiet confidence and to grow their audience without having to spend so much time online. Danny started her self-employment journey as an energy worker using the modalities of kinesiology, uh, reconnective healing, and Akashic Records readings. The evolution from energy work to business mentoring came about organically as clients started asking her for help with starting their own online holistic business. And at this point, she has helped many people to do that, um, to you know, get, her, get their business online, to clarify their message, to do their business, to, to plan their business, with a more, like you said, she said, quiet confidence and connection to a more organic rhythm that is sustainable for them. So, um, so Danny, I guess maybe the the first uh, mess, uh, the question I want to ask you is, um, you uh, pioneered or maybe you know kind of popularized among at least among our circles the idea of quiet marketing or taking business in a more slower way and still be successful as you know, you show yourself and your clients show. So what, so what does that mean? Slower? Uh, yeah, we'll start there. Yeah. Well, yeah, I'll start by sharing a little story. Um, it was about 2017. I always remember it was 2017 because it was our first, the first place we rented in Spain and I was at a point where my business hadn't really taken off um, yet. You know, I, was, I, was, I had clients, but it was sort of still really kind of early stages. But I'd spent the last three or four years trying to make it work, you know, trying to get lift off and really hustling and being ever present everywhere on all different platforms all of the time. And what happened this one day is I had started asking myself in the morning as part of my morning practice, how can I bring more ease and joy into my day? And I was kind of getting stuck on that question. And then I kind of became aware, like, yeah, this is a few days in a row now. And I'm really, this question's starting to irritate me, actually. So I went and sat on my bed, crossed my legs and, um, you know, closed my eyes. And with the intention of, like, tuning in, okay, as soon as my eyes went down, I heard, aim lower. And I was like, what? <laughs> what the hell? Like, i am always been, you know, this high achiever reaching for the stars. Um, aiming lower is just not something I would ever, ever, ever think of doing, you know? And yet it was like in my own voice. And so I was just like, what happened there? And um, after a few minutes, I just started to think, okay, well, what would it look like to aim lower? And as I started to consider that, so interesting, these, it was like a, a pool of joy, a joyful feeling just started to rise up from my base and like fl flood into my stomach, basically. And I was like, oh my goodness, like what is going on here? But it was like a very visceral experience and enough to really get my attention. And I thought, okay, for those kind of two things to happen, to hear that, those two words and to have this feeling viscerally, there must be something, you know, I need to pay attention to. So I, I started to experiment with aiming lower. And I think really the first thing I did is I let go of income goals. I was, 
you know, I kept having this like income goal and at the end of the month, I didn't get it, I didn't get it, I didn't get it. I decided to let that go and that was pure joy and just focus on um, building community. And so what happened is over time, like this is when my business actually took off by slowing down. And what I realised is, or kind of aiming lower, but I, it was like there was an evolution to those two words. I realised that it was not, it was not absolutely aiming lower. I mean, it was for someone like me because I was always aiming for the stars, expecting things to happen quickly. But it was the pace at which I expected things to happen that was the issue. And so, and then when I started to look around, I thought that's most people's issue, right? It's the pace. It's not that we can't have big goals or whatever, it's the pace. So then this whole idea of aiming slower arose, you know, and I really believe that by slowing down, by being very mindful, by doing things properly, we actually make more progress. Yeah. Yeah. That's a great story. Thank you for sharing the the origin story of that. Um, Yeah. And if I could just add my own kind of example of this, um, ironically, it was about my joyful productivity course Um, when I was the last time I launched it, um, I was in the beginning, the first couple days of sales, I was discouraged because they weren't keeping pace with what I had set as a goal. And I was, you know, like, you know, I was like, I was getting discouraged. And then I, I also, it's funny. I also kind of had this thought and be like, well, you know, why don't we just let that go and, and go for a really minimal number you know just really really super doable then and then i'm like okay yeah i'll go for that super then it's so easy then i'm pretty much already there you know and and then i got happier about it and then i just continued you know i continued my my launch process maybe from a better energy or whatever and what was funny was that it surpassed even the original goal now i'm not saying that that's what it should happen but it was just such a funny example, maybe the universe showing me that, you know what, it's okay. There's this dynamic that, uh, yeah. you know, like you're saying, you know, we've, if, we, if we bring more joy into what we're doing, um, whatever the results are, um, we have joy. <laughs> you know, it's like, yeah. great. Yeah. But also we tend to be, there, there tends to be a genius there, you know, within the joy and within the working at our pace. So I, wanna, I want you to talk about this a bit more. Um, to work at our pace and for the people who are saying, well, could I, you know, working at my pace, I might be not doing as much as other people. Is it possible to be doing things slower, doing things less and still accomplish, you know, having a good business? (laughs) Yes, I think absolutely. And I think the, the, the biggest part of the problem is that we're seeing what other people are doing. That's the biggest problem. Left to our own devices, um, you know, our type of audiences, we're doing our soul work. We we want to have this great experience while we're helping people. And so left to our own devices, if probably we're not for the internet and social media, although, of course, there's absolute, my my business wouldn't exist if if they didn't exist. So, you know, but we're influenced by that. So we start to think that we should be going faster and we should be, we should be, we should be, you know? So like one of the things I love to do um, or or mention, if I notice people, they're looking at all this stuff, I'm like, have tunnel vision, have tunnel vision. I don't know if we spoke about this last time, George, but it's one of my favorite strategies, you know, because I know myself, even when I see what other coaches are doing, I can still get triggered. Like, Oh, absolutely maybe I should do that yeah maybe i should do that oh, <laughs> yeah, you know and no, it's, it's well i mean because we're yeah. we're tribal creatures i mean it's natural for us to want to well, stay in the tribe and when we see our peers or people we think are our peers doing things we're like well maybe then i should do that to k- keep pace with the tribe i guess but but yeah so keep going like tunnel vision how well how how do you how do you do that how do you yeah, because it's, it's one thing to say it, right? But in a practical sense, how do you actually have tunnel vision? So one of the very practical things that I did um, starting a few years ago is I actually, I, I noticed the posts that were coming up on Facebook that were triggering me, right? And I was just made sure I un, um, 
unliked those pages, even if I liked those people personally. I, um, I did whatever I could to close myself off. So then it was like, hold on, I'm a friend of it. You know, I could see that there were these connections, that there was still, um, that was why things were still showing up. So I did a lot to curate my newsfeed to really trim it down, you know. So, and honestly, I've got to say, apart from yourself, George, and sometimes, Tad, I don't even see a lot of his stuff. I don't see what anyone else is doing. And I love that, you know? Yeah, yeah. Well, yours is definitely a page people uh, ought to follow if they want to continue um, immersing themselves in, this, in these kinds of values and this kind of message mm -hmm. that we can work at a sustainable, joyful pace and accomplish um, a successful business, have a successful business. So one of the things that, um, you know, you have done is to scale back on a lot of what you were doing and then work differently. Um, so tell us a bit about that. What, what, what do you advise? So, so, yeah. you know, like the typical advice for social media out there, like join lots of Facebook groups, um, you know, respond to as many people as you possibly can in the most thoughtful way possible, which is like, how, how do, how do I have so many hours in the day? But anyway, yeah. how, tell us, I mean, cause you, you had done some of that, but then you had. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. I mean, um, I guess Facebook groups were, they really were very helpful for, for me. Um, they, they really got me going. I, I actually don't quite know how I was getting clients before that. I know I was, but this is the thing when you, you get the wrong type of tunnel vision from being in Facebook groups, right? Because what happens is you start to believe that if I'm not in this, my business is going to shrivel up and die. And that's what was happening to me. So yeah, I had been advised, yeah, you know, join these groups. And I was like, I, when I got introduced to that world, I thought, how interesting. And, you know, I, I did the thing, I joined the groups and I had a little spreadsheet and, you know, I worked out, all the, all the stuff. And it, it probably was enjoyable for a time. But then I really, I guess, you know, just getting more and more in tune with my body and my sensitivities and what it was telling me. Like I, I knew those moments when I was like, gosh, I've got to go into the Facebook group and I've got to find something to comment on. And it felt terrible, you know, and I'm like, Danny, what are you doing here? But then, the, you know, my belief was, but if I don't stay here, I'm going to drop through the internet. I'm, you know, I'm not going to exist. You know. Yeah, and just so, to be clear, the, the, these are the strategies about going into free Facebook groups yes. that other people are facilitating, and yes. just trying to be helpful so that people might see you and then hire you, you know, all that stuff. So, so, so yeah. So now you're you're really um, like tunnel vision with with your strategies, and one of your strategies is so interesting, which is to to kind of plan your business three months at a time, right? Like that's one of the mm -hmm. things that you're, you know, you're actually putting a, um, a course together on this and because you've been doing this and it's been effective yeah. in helping your clients do this. So tell us about yeah. that. Cause usually oh, we we're, you know, we're, we talk, we're talking about this annual plan and you know, yeah. it's, it's, a, it's overwhelming and, um, but yeah, tell us about this three month idea. Yeah. So it's something that I've been working with um, in various forms, probably for the last two years or so. And um, I've just refined it and refined it. And really, it keeps me so grounded. So um, it's a very simple process. Okay. It begins with this idea of looking back. Right. And I got that idea from um, Todd Herman. Um, I actually never did his 90 day year uh, program or whatever, but um, I had some, I was in his launch sequence once and I, I got a few resources of him. And this is when I was introduced to the owl and the wow brain. And so it was mind blowing for me, this idea that what most of us are doing, we, we're like with our perspective is from where we are to where we're going. And that's the owl brain. And it's kind of like, I'm not there yet. I need to do more. Uh, you know, so it's all that not enoughness and the wow brain is from where you are to where look back to where you've been either in the past week or the past month or the past year. And that was invaluable to me. So that's how I start this process by looking back on the last three months, looking at what came to fruition. What did I learn? 
Um, what do I feel good about? What do I feel, oh, you know, I'm not sure about that. I think I want to change that. And through that little reflection, what emerges is naturally is like what's important moving forward. And then I have a simple thing where I go, I choose three projects to focus on for that quarter. So this is outside normal client work, right? So for example, you know, an ongoing project I have is run a, run a workshop, you know, in like April, May, June. Okay. So there's one project. Another one, you know, like from last month was to re, redo my course. That, was, that top probably took, you know, the most part, but it's just three projects. And then, um, yeah. So three, I, three projects for each month or quarter. for the three months? Well, for the quarter, uh, yeah, for the three months. Yeah, so, okay. yeah. you know, so, so one project may take the duration. Mm -hmm. In fact, they could all, some of them could take the duration, whereas oh, some might like be. Like overlapping. Quicker. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, um, and then what happens is if some opportunity comes in or some idea, um, and this happens all the time to us, right? Instead of um, going, oh yeah, no, I'm gonna do this and no, I'm gonna do that. It's like, oh, hold on, let's, let's check in with the plan. So I've got a weekly review process that keeps anchoring me back to the plan. Like what is, where, where is it, where am I at? And so this actually happened the other, just last week, George, in your course. I, the, your course about courses, I'm like, I know what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do a course for human design projectors, you know, because I've been asked about that, blah, blah, blah. I thought, well, that's a fantastic idea. And then a few days later, I checked in with my plan and I'm like, Danny, where on earth does it say that? Nowhere. <laughs> the answer is nowhere. But what it did say is I'm, what I'm meant to be working on is a quiet marketing course. And, I, and the other components are actually feeding into that anyway. So that, that's actually going to happen. So I'm like, no, don't put something else on your plate here. Like you've got these things and maybe, yeah, keep that in mind for the next three months, maybe. Yeah, I like that a lot. That it kind of is this middle ground between, all right, stay focused. You know, three months is not too long and it's enough time also to get something done, of course. Mm -hmm. And so it's nice that you're like, okay, yes, of course there are good ideas. We can always, there's always the next three months after that and the next three months after that. So it's a very nice pace to, to kind of um, plan and, and get things done. And um, one of the things that, um, you know, you are part of this, part of what you're teaching is kind of giving people uh, or giving our creations the, the time and space to mature. So what does that mean? Yeah. Oh, my God. Um, so... This started off as just like a really nice philosophical idea, like give, give things space to breathe. And now right. it's like a really legit business strategy for me. So if I think back to the Facebook marketing days, um, it was like, get an idea, put it out. <laughs> get an idea, put it out. Because in these group, the groups, there was always an offer day, right? So you could promote something, right? So it was always like, it was just like flick, 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 flick. And okay, you know, there, there can be some value in that in just experimenting and things like that. But what I found is as I um, kind of held on to things a little bit more and not have this energy of, it's basically that fear of missing out energy. Like, well, if I don't post it today and it's off the day, then it's going to be a whole week before anyone, you know, sees something from me, that kind of thing. Um, but I found that as I held on to the idea a bit more, um, it just developed into a, such a better idea. So if I, I started to notice, like, man, if I had have put it out already, I hadn't even considered all these other things that maybe I don't really want to happen. And this version is way better. So, yeah, now I, I really enjoy allowing things to percolate. And um, even with, uh, you know, I had a... I had a little mentorship start um, recently and I remember there were just aspects of that that hadn't seemed to kind of land and I just take it with curiosity now. I'm like, yeah, I wonder about that bit. I wonder, you know, like, and I just trust that the, that piece will land soon, <laughs> sometime soon, you know, yeah, yeah. instead That's... of rushing it through. Mm. And one of the other things that um, I want to talk about, touch on is this idea of, organizing our time, you know, planning our time. Um, how do you look at 
how do you, how have you found it successful to plan your time? Now we talked about this three month, right? Yeah. This three month. Uh, and for those who are curious how this three month um, planning will work, you know, Danny's going to have a course on that. So be sure to check out the, you know, go to her website, join her newsletter. I promise you, you're going to enjoy how she writes her newsletters. Uh, if you like this kind of energy and this kind of about these kinds of values, I think you'll enjoy it. So you can hear more about the three month um, planning course coming up, but, um, but, uh, and then you have this weekly review. So tell us more about anything else yeah. about how we organize. Yeah. Yeah. So I think how I schedule my week is, is still a work in progress in many ways, but it's, I'm so happy with where I've got it now. So what I do is, well, first of all, I kind of theme my week. So Monday and now Tuesday are quiet desk days. So these are just like the days where I don't have any, I certainly don't have any clients. Sometimes I might have a personal appointment or something like for my own business development or whatever, um, but no clients. So then uh, there's nowhere I need to be. I can just focus on my projects. And then Wednesday and Thursday are my client days. And then Friday is Danny day. <laughs> and uh, Various things can happen on that day. I, I generally not work, but sometimes if things have like not quite happened to plan, I might do a few things. Like I do my weekly review on a Friday, that kind of thing. Um, and then, so what I'm doing at the moment is I, I have a minimum of three um, co-working sessions that line up with the three projects. So it's like this co-working session is for that, that, for that. So I know what's going on in that regard. And what's interesting, I was showing, um, I was showing my own group this layout um, last week, and one of the one of the uh, members said, um, "But Danny, what if someone like what if what if a client wants to book in and you've already got these pre, you know?" She didn't know that I had defined client days yet, you know, and she's like, "You know, what do you do then?" So she felt anxious about making like recurring appointments because. What if a client wants to book in there? And I'm like, look, um, I have predetermined session times for clients and that's it, you know? So if, if they can't fit into that, I, they're, they're not my ideal client, really. And if they need to reschedule, then chances are there'll be an opening in one of those predetermined times, you know? And she was like, like that was, wow, <laughs> you know? Now, I've got to say, in the beginning, and maybe you were a bit the same, George, I don't know, but I was making myself very available. You know, I was um, available, you know, probably six days a week and early in the morning. And, you know, so I was a bit all over the place. But I just, you know, I think it's really important to, to start the way we mean to carry on. You know, so if it doesn't give me joy to yeah. be seeing a client at seven o'clock in the morning, which means I've probably got to get up at five, <laughs> then... Yes. No, like yes. I, I'm not going to, I trust that the right mm. people will come. Yes. You know? Well, you know, that's the thing about having our own business. <laughs> you mm. know, it's like we get to set the kind of schedule and way of working that is sort of our ideal life. And yes, um, we need to be reasonable about it, but there is a lot of space there to be reasonable about it and be sustainable. And so mm -hmm. I like that you say, Hey, you know what? Th Wednesday, Thursday, Hey, that's two days. It's, people can usually schedule something then if they really can't, Hey, there's plenty of other providers <laughs> that you introduce yeah. them to. It's like, you don't have to mm -hmm. take everybody and be accommodate everyone. Right. Mm -hmm. So thank you for that. Um, so as we close off this conversation, anything else, any other words of encouragement, um, you know, for us, uh, those, especially those who, you know, since you work with sensitive women and, mm. you know, especially now as we're recording this during, you know, the coronavirus times, um, yeah. we're just going to go on for another months, you know, few yeah. months at least. What's your, any other, you know, words of Well, uh, probably what comes to mind is just, I was reflecting on something a client had said um, the, uh, the other day and... <sighs> Like she's, she's finding her groove with things because she's not looking at how it should be done, right? Uh -huh. and this, yeah. this seems obvious in a way, but it's not. I think most people have difficulty with marketing because mm. they're looking at what should be done, you know? They're looking at the rules and they're not really 
connecting with what feels true and right and what would be a genuine expression of them. You know, someone's told them you need to do that and they're like, and I did this too. Okay, I've got to do that then <laughs> you know, to be successful. But I don't know, I think that's probably my parting word. It's like, how you can you really be? Like, what if you could just be really you in the way you present your business and what would that look like? You know? I love that. And yeah, yeah. for most people, it brings a smile to their face, you know? Totally, totally. Like, yeah, like you said, like, <clears throat> if we aren't giving ourselves that kind of pressure to follow other people's strategies, if it doesn't feel true to us, um, if we allow ourselves to, to do, like you said, what is most you, then that's where the genius, like each person's mm -hmm. genius comes in. It's like, yes, thank you so much for the work that you do and the kinds of energy that you bring to your community and to the world. So I hope, um, you know, those watching have found this valuable and please do and connect with Danny in the links below the video or above wherever, you are, wherever it is. Um, Facebook page, you're active there. Uh, your website obviously you have a newsletter um so and i think you're on instagram too and so anyway yeah. we'll we'll put the links that you choose to be active in and sure. uh, people can follow yeah. you there great so thank, you so, thank you so much george it's been great having a chat thank you yeah thanks